It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy. That makes this show 5.45 live. Tonight, uh, the Heifers is back, even in the middle of winter. Registration's open for that. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a sec. Bids in for local elections. That means the political games are on. And uh, Cumberland Farms has a grand reopening. How it benefits the Boys and Girls Club. We'll talk about that, all that and more. And we do it all in 15 minutes. So make sure you stick with us here on 5.45 live. <laughs> of the absurdities that goes on right here in Washington, D.C. is that Congress keeps voting for the profits of the huge oil coal companies and the coal companies. Starting now, we have got to end all of the subsidies, all of the tax breaks that go to the oil companies, that go to the coal companies, and I'm going to be introducing legislation to do just that. Welcome back to this January 30th, 2012 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy. That's footage of Vermont U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders, who was in Washington last week to back up activist Bill McKibben, McKibben as he rallied Americans from across the coast uh, against big oil and coal and the subsidies Congress continues to send their way. All right, welcome to uh, 545 Live. I'm alongside Joe Bush here, which means I get to split the stories with him, do a little bit less That's yammering right. away here. Joe, I'll turn it, uh, turn it over to you. All right, Roland. Last night, a two-alarm fire in Vernon kept me Facebooking late into the night as engines from neighboring Vermont and Massachusetts, as well as New Hampshire, were called into the control of blaze that state police investigators now believe originated from a faulty wood stove. There you go. All right, uh, the fire has prompted local authorities to issue warnings regarding wood stove safety. Topping the list uh, is an annual uh, chimney cleaning, which can prevent fires in the flues and confirm soundness in the system. The city of Rutland has posted a list of wood stove precautions on their website, and in turn, we'll post that on our 545 Live Facebook page. All right, and continuing the headlines, the Canal Street Neighbors Convenience Store gas station has again been robbed. Local officials are investigating the possible connection between this robbery and one that occurred at... Uh, the neighbors less than two weeks ago. All right, Brad PD Sergeant Robert Perkins told the reformer yesterday that victimized establishments can take additional precautions to minimize the losses and deter robberies altogether, including hourly cash drops, clear windows to the outside, and prominent security cameras. He was quoted as saying, making video cameras clearly visible can also help prevent a potential robbery. If people know they're being watched, they're far less likely to commit a robbery. There you go. Uh, that uh, He was reporting that to the Brattleboro Reformer. That full story can be found at BrattleboroReformer.com. All righty. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, there'll be plenty more, including uh, strolling of the heifers. We'll talk about how you can get your organization involved. Um, we'll also uh, go to the grand opening of Cumberland Farms, which happened around 4 p.m. today. All that and more here on 545 Live. In a world where the natural and supernatural collide, two investigative journalists will risk their lives to capture the unthinkable on film. But will it make them famous or destroy their lives forever? Aren't you afraid? I'm more afraid to fail. They haven't had the cleaning lady around in a while. Get out! Frederick Noyes, Roland Bolt, no, no. Eva, in Theaters Friday. A lot of stuff could have gone down in here. <laughs> Welcome back to 545 Live. You're watching footage uh, from the last round of BCTV's Final Cut Pro introductory editing class. Um, now, if you think you want to make something as spectacular as that spooky footage filmed in the attic of this 230 Main Street uh, office, you should sign up for classes because there's still room. They kick off tomorrow night. It's tomorrow and Thursday night uh, right here in BCTV's second floor. They start at 5.30 p.m. So for those of you holding down a full-time job, you can still make it. It's just 20 bucks, which, Joe, is the most preposterously good deal. When you think the about best Apple's... best $20 you'll ever spend. Come Sorry. on down. Start your own TV show. That's about Look where uh, you can go with it, right? Yeah, it's about nine hundred and eighty dollars mm. less than Apple's official Final Cut training. I'll be there along with BCTV Access Coordinator Frederick Noyes, busting out all our nonlinear video editing knowledge. You can sign up at BrattleboroTV.org. There's a Learn section right at the top. Uh, 
you're a couple clicks away. You can even pay with PayPal right on there. Again, uh, they're still open and they start tomorrow. Alrighty, Great. next, uh, Cumberland Farms is teaming up with the Boys and Girls Club to make them some cash. Uh, all uh, this next month and they may even extend it if you purchase something from the chill zone a, uh, a drink there or any of their coffee beverages 20 cents of that purchase will go to the boys and girls club uh, earlier today the newest member of our 545 live team joe miller gamble was at cumberland farms to chat it up with folks there about this fundraiser We hope to raise at least a thousand dollars, but uh, I have 55 stores, and this is, I think, maybe the 12th or 13th one we've done. A lot of them have been over two thousand dollars. All right, well, the strolling of the heifers may seem like a ways away with the parade kicking off this June, but Vermont's largest attraction works year round behind the scenes. Uh, building up the bevy of events, entertainers, and animals on and off the parade route. Applications for the Parade Unit, Farm Food Fiber Tour, Live Green Expo, and more officially opened on Friday and can be filled out at strollingoftheheifers.org. For more information, we got the strolls Martin Langefeld on camera to talk a little bit about registration and event planning process. We have set up on our website registration for if your club or organization, business, farm, etc. wants to be in the parade. If you want to be a vendor at the Live Green Expo or a vendor on the Friday Night Street Festival, if you're a farm or if you're a 4-H club and you have heifers that you want to have participate, uh, that registration is available. Next, the filing deadline for local elections are wrapped up today with hopefuls for Brattleboro Select Board and Town Meeting reps turning in their hard-earned signatures. Last week, Town Clerk Annette Cappy spoke on BCTV about the importance of engaging in Brattleboro's unique political structure. All we're looking for are candidates who, who care about where they live, where they make their home, and actually have an opportunity to change what happens in your life. People complain about taxes, they complain about this, they complain about that, but this is your opportunity to make some changes and to um, affect something happening. Again, uh, registrations did wrap up, but Joe, I'll turn it over to you for uh, the, the rest of that Well, story. I just know from experience that with respect to the town meeting members, uh, they're often in need of uh, more than they have applicants even, and that it is possible if you miss out on all this uh, uh, sign up in the petition, you can still go to the caucus right before the meeting, and you, you still can occasionally uh, find yourself becoming a, a town meeting member, at least for the year until next year's election. Uh, there's a lot of times they still don't have enough members. Select board members and town officials have put an emphasis on engaging youth this year. Um, I consider myself young, Joe, but I'll be behind the scenes working BCTV's cameras. So I know, I'm out of that, I though I'm a Brattleboro. It's too bad we miss out on, a, on what would be a valued <laughs> member of our community, although I, I, oh, that's right, you are a Brattleboro resident, so Indeed. yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, we got to do traffic and weather uh, with our precious little time left, but first, Joe, let's talk Harris Hill briefly. Uh, turn it over to the well, less high-tech Well, Harris Hill, coming up here. February 18th and 19th. And what we are looking at is we're not only having the Pepsi Challenge and the Fred Harris Memorial Tournament, but the 2012 event this year is the only U.S. stop on the FIS Tournament in the, in the U.S. Collegiate Ski Jumping Finals and also the finals of the USA Ski Jumping Tournament. So literally the best of the best are going to be in Brattleboro here this February for the Harris Hill Ski Jump. And we, the Pulse of Brattleboro, will be covering it live. We'll be down there both days. and. Look forward to an episode of The Pulse coming out of this year's Harris Hills as we've done in the past. So Excellent. Look forward to seeing it. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, as promised, we'll do our new high-tech traffic report. Uh, but first, Super Bowl weekend, Joe. Uh, oh, should be a good one. Where we get there? Well, wow, geez. Patriots fans all across uh, Brattleboro and New England are, are gearing I'm, up. I'm guessing there's probably more Patriots fans around here in our audience than there are Giants fans. Oh, well, yeah, maybe not. But uh, for those of you that are worried about Rob Gronkowski, uh, he also did not practice again today uh, with that high ankle sprain. And uh, as everyone knows, his dad let that cat out of the bag. But uh, hopefully we're looking forward to it being a good game. And uh, either way, I'm sure uh, <clears throat> fans of both teams will get their money's worth this coming Sunday. Should be a, a good uh, ultimate rematch of that, right. that uh, previous meeting. 
Giants upset. For sure. All right, uh, we do this high-tech traffic report now, powered by Enrix and Beat the Traffic. That's what we've got up on our screen here behind me. Hopefully I can uh, fire it up on the screen scrape here as well so that uh, viewers can take a look at it uh, in uh, full color detail because it is a color key. The deal is uh, that uh, we're looking at downtown here. Uh, green means that uh, traffic is moving along nicely. Orange, heavy volume, but it is in fact uh, still moving and red is deadly. Now, Joe, if you take a look here, we've got uh, Putney Road, north and south are still moving, though. It's a little congested. Uh, Western Ave, Canal Street, the same deal. Um, and if you're going out of Western Ave, you've got a strip there, green, that's doing you some good. But uh, once you get into downtown, as is so often, perhaps too often the case, oh, we got no. a big block of red there. <laughs> Malfunction Junction to High Street is truly deadly, especially around the time of day that we always do this show. Yeah, make uh, the most of it while you're down there. Take a good look right. at the, the uh, co-op project and how it's that's progressing. That's right. Some so. of the, that great downtown architecture. It looks like 91 traffic goers are mm -hmm. good to go tonight. All right, that's our traffic report powered by Enrix and Beat the Traffic. Mm -hmm. Joe, uh, do you want to do some weather while I well, lean what are we in looking front at of here? you they, and change the screen settings? started out saying we're going to get a couple inches of snow tonight, but it looks like uh, now they backed it off to maybe an inch uh, between tonight and tomorrow morning. So around 40% chance of... Uh, uh, of snow this evening and uh, tomorrow cloudy with a high near 41 Tuesday night slight chance of rain mostly cloudy with a low around 33 so uh, and Wednesday they're saying a high pushing 50 so uh, it'll be a little bit a uh, little bit of wind and uh, maybe a slight chance of showers about 50 degrees on Wednesday here for the first of February Oof, that's yeah, uh, that's crazy indeed Alrighty, what else do we have to do? We got uh, weather taken care of, we got traffic taken care of, we got the Patriots taken care of, uh, and we got about uh, less than a minute, we got? We're, uh, a minute left. We're we've uh, timed it up pretty well. I just want to wrap up with a uh, a few uh, more disclaimers out there, including tomorrow night at 7:30 at the UMass Fine Arts Center in Amherst. The curtain goes up on the color purple, and tomorrow night at 7:15, the BUHS Varsity Basketball Boys take on Burr and Burton. That shows live on BCTV Channel 10. Just two clicks up the dial on our government and education sister channel, or you can stick right here on Channel 8 for a 6 p.m. showing tomorrow of the latest Montpelier Connection with Reps Mike Merwicki and Sarah Edwards, along with Senator Jeanette White, and a whole lot of A-game commentary, including. Uh, Judge Murtha's latest uh, VY Entergy Nuclear versus the State of, State of Vermont lawsuit. All right, uh, Joe, that's a full lid. Thanks for checking in with me back at the desk again. I sure appreciate having the, uh, the co-host power here. Uh, it. There we go. As always. And uh, thanks to our viewers out there for wasting another uh, good, perfectly good 15 minutes on us. Uh, if you want to waste them again, we'll be back Wednesday with an in-studio interview, uh, the usual traffic weather shenanigans, and a whole lot more. For BCTV and 545 Live, I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy, doing what we always do uh, right around this time, saying, night, everybody.